If you have a question during the show, we want to hear it. Your input is a big part of what makes this show successful and we thrive on your energy and insights. So whether it's a quick comment, a thoughtful question, or an opinion you just have to share, don't hesitate to drop it in the chat. Now, if you want to make absolutely sure your message stands out and gets featured on the show, there's an easy way to do that. Use the Super Chat feature. Just click the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box to send a new Super Chat. This guarantees that your message gets on the air and it's also a fantastic way to support our channel. We rely on your support. We rely on your support. Um, we will rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love and we appreciate every bit of it. So go ahead, let us know what you're thinking. Hit that super chat button. Let's keep the show as interactive and exciting as possible. And if you prefer, you can also go to the jsmcpodcast.net to tip, donate, and leave a comment or question there. We couldn't do what we do without your amazing support. And we're so thankful to have you as part of our community. We have to start off, though, with the reports that Ten Hag is preparing as usual for Man United's upcoming match when they take on Brentford. Obviously, this is after the um, after the international break right now. It's the, you know, in the international break. But when we come back, that's Saturday, October 19th. So obviously not this Saturday, but the Saturday after. They're taking on Brentford um, at Old Trafford. And there's reports that you know, Ten Hag, he is preparing as usual for this game, despite this supposed meeting on Tuesday with him and Sir Jim Ratcliffe and some of the upper boards, uh, with you know, with the, some of the upper people in the executive committee, um, you know, and um, and yeah, it's uh, and we know the continuous uncertainty surrounding his position with the end of last season now carrying over to the start of this season some devastating results that United have suffered um, losing to Liverpool 3-0 losing to Brighton uh, losing to Brighton losing to Liverpool 3-0 uh, you know having you know their last not winning a game in their last five games in all competitions um, suffering that really bad loss to Tottenham, only getting two points from your first two Europa League games against Twente and Porto. Um, it's been it's really been a shocking start to this season. Manchester so United are sitting right now through seven games, fourteenth, fourteenth place in the Premier League with with two wins from seven, with a minus three goal differential. The, they're just not good enough. They're just not good enough. They're attacking. Uh, their um. Their attack is one of the worst in the Premier League. They've only scored five goals this season, which puts them tied for the second worst in the league. Um, the only teams that have the only teams that have scored less goals than Man United. The only team that scored less goals than Man United this season is Southampton, who is this newly promoted side. They're sitting on one one point from the first seven games. Only one draw and six losses. It's unbelievable. It was, and, and United only have... Uh, you, that's the only team United have scored more goals than. You know? You know, the attack has been lackluster. They've lacked that dynamism. They've lacked they've lacked the goals, quite frankly. Um, as I you know, five goals in seven games, it's just not to the standard of Man United. And and this team is just very, very below the standards. They're just not good enough and it just seems like a never ending cycle. And uh my thing is what is it? What is it gonna take at this point? Then, you know, if you're starting off, if you're through your first seven, th- you're through your first seven games, and you only have eight points, and you're sitting fourteenth. What does it really take for a manager to get fired? What does it take for Eric Ten Hag to get fired? And Eric Ten Hag is he the main problem at United? No, United have had huge, huge, huge issues with the football club ever since Alex Ferguson left. Going all the way back, 
But uh, but at the same time, though, when you're trying to look at it from an objective point of view, even as a United fan, it's just not been good enough what Ten Hag has... What Ten Hag has... What Ten Hag has overseen. Overseen. It's just not been good enough. The way that they play. And the the results is one thing. But the performances at the same time. They're bad as well. They're really bad. It's not just the results. It's the performances. It's the in-game decisions. Um, it's some of the players that he brought in. You know, his players. You're talking 100 million Anthony. You're talking Mason Mount. Erickson. Uh, Oh, Nana, nah, nah. players that he have, uh, he's had previous experience working with or players that he wanted at the club that they are not doing, that are not playing at the level. And then it's a combination of just, it's just everything. Everything surrounding the club is just toxic. It's toxic beyond, beyond analysis almost at this point. And you almost ask, you know, if he was this close on the verge of being sacked at the end of last season, how can he, you know, how does he survive finding himself 14th place through seven games? You know? And yes, he has won, you know, the FA Cup and the FL Cup. And if you look at it from an objective point of view, that's that's pretty successful because United, before that, uh, uh, before that, a Carabao Cup, uh, that he won, um, not this past season, but the season before that, his first season, they were on a trophy drought for about, I believe it was since 2016 when they won the Europa League and Carabao Cup with Mourinho. They were on a massive trophy doubt, trophy drought. So, you know, and Andy Cole, he did come out saying, you know, a little bit of backing for um, Eric Ten Hag saying, Sir Alex Ferguson, the greatest manager in the club's history, didn't win a trophy in his first three years at Manchester United. Winning two cups in two seasons isn't easy to do, regardless of what others say. If it was easy to do, then everyone would. Yeah, I agree with it at that point too, but... But the cups now, and the cups during Sir Alex Ferguson's time... Is very very different. Besides the Champions League, the FA Cup and EFL Cup is doesn't have the same magnitude. Doesn't have the same intensity, especially from the bigger teams in the earlier rounds. So, but it it, it is an achievement to win two trophies, especially when you look at what United have done the past few. You know, with the trophy that that they had. But again, with Manchester United, you know, you're also going to be judged with your league performances, and quite frankly. Not good enough. You know, they had that a good season um, where they finished third place in Marie, in, in Ten Hag's first year there. It was, you know, getting 75 points. over. It was a solid season. And you think, you you're you know, and you, as a United fan, you think you're going to build upon that. Then you go on the following year. You finish eighth. You, you, you play some dreadful football. Um, it's just not good enough. It's Ten Hag almost gets sacked. And then a year later on, through seven games, it's just even more alarming. And there's more questions than answers. And, um, and yeah, and, you know, I'm looking at it. And, you know, if you're a United fan and you're... And the thing that's even more dep- depressing if you're a United fan is if you do sack Ten Hag and you're looking at the odds, Gary Southgate is the, you know, is the favorite to take over. The, you know, Gary Southgate is the favorite to take over. That will just be... That will be funny to watch. That will be absolute entertainment. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That will be the... You know... That will be amazing to watch. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. You know, Ten Hag, he... In the summer, he extended his contract until 2026. Is that playing a role in this... As well, potentially, maybe, um, I don't really, I don't, I wouldn't really think it does, but 
you know, I, I'm tired of coming on and saying the same, same, same things over and over again regarding Ten Hag. The fact that he's, you know, able to walk on this thin tightrope for as long as he's been able to walk is, it, to me, is pretty impressive what he's been able to do to, you know, to be on the verge of getting fired for this long and still, you know, still being the manager and potentially getting, you know, another uh, another opportunity. But you do have to say, in post this international break, it, it's it has to be now. Like, if it wasn't before, it has to be make or break, like, times 10. Um, you know, and they don't have the most difficult fixture list. You know, taking on Brentford, taking on their, one of their former managers in Jose Mourinho. You got West Ham, Leicester. Those four games, you know, the results better start piling up. Uh, because, look, within that f- four-game skit, you know, if they, you know, if they disappoint, especially, you know, getting eliminated early in the AFL Cup when you take on Leicester, that would be a really, really bad look. Because one of the main things that Ten Hag has, you know, as as is, uh, you know, something he can, you know, have a backbone over is the fact that he's won a few trophies. And to lose an opportunity to Leicester, that would be a bad, bad loss. You know, if you, they struggle against Fenerbahce, especially with the fact that United only have two points from the first two Europa League games. And then obviously the Brentford, West Ham, Premier League games, they're, they're, they're obviously massive games, um, especially with the United sitting in 14th. They need to rack up the points. So no, I'm, you know, I'm, but I'm overall, I am tired of saying the same things over and over again. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens.